just wanted to come on and say that I'm so proud. I'm having a proud mommy moment. My old baby channel, my video hit 10,000 views for at least underneath the year that video came out. So it makes me very happy that 10,000 people have actually clicked that video to watch it. Thank you. And I'll leave a link if you haven't checked out the video, how to start an at-home business and make money. 10,000 views. I'm so excited. So I wanted to kind of give a little spin on that video. If you miss how to start an at-home nail business, I will leave a link above. You can go check that out. So I wanted to do a part two, in a sense, video to that one year from the day of that original video air. So we're going to be doing how to level up your at-home business starting now. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, what's up? Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I post a new video every week. So today we're going to be doing part two -ish, to the how to start an at-home nail business. So you've been in business for a while, you're booked and busy, things are going good. How can we improve or upgrade as a nail tech for our business? So the first thing that I want to talk about is your services and your prices. So the easiest way that you can level up your business is by adding more services, increasing your prices. So we will expand our service list. That's the first thing that you want to do when you're thinking about maybe leveling up your business. I always speak a lot about adding pedicures, products, so on and so forth. We're going to add on little things. And if you already do mostly most of these things or all of these things, easily just add. Maybe now invest in a paraffin machine and you can offer that. Invest in some type of hand treatment or invest in products to use on your customers. You don't have to make them. So anything that you can kind of add on to give your clients more of a relaxing experience, a pleasurable experience, more spa quality or such, or just anything that you can tackle on to the stuff you already have so that we can expand and grow as a business. Leave me a comment below if you want more information on how to upgrade your current service list or how to kind of introduce new services on your service menu. So the other thing is your price. We always want to price accordingly. So we have to make sure that every so often you are increasing your prices. Nothing drastic. I will leave a link to a video that I did on how to price as a new nail tech and how to increase your prices as an old nail tech. So hopefully that can help you out a little bit. But we want to make sure that our prices grow as well as us because you can't work for 10 years at the same rate. At some point you're going to have to end up growing and expanding your prices and as your customers become more loyal and you become more better at what you're doing, you, you become worth your price. Number two, your products. What products are you currently using right now? So as we grow, we want to invest in better quality. So now clients are coming to you, one, because you are you and they like how you work. There's other things that go into it. So maybe you're working with a lower brand, let's say like a Mia Secret or something. And you know, sometimes we have like little lifting here or there or whatever. We can upgrade our products. You can start using stuff like, like Valentino, Young Nails is good. Um, you know, there's a lot of different brands out there, but we want to give better quality products, especially if we're going to increase our prices. If we're increasing our prices, those nails better last. So we want to take a look at our stock, our inventory. What are we going to be using? And mention this to your clients. No, they might not know the difference between Young Nails, Monomer, and Acrylic versus Valentino. But just say, oh, so you know I'm going to be using better stuff now. Yeah, the nails should be lasting better, or if not longer, or more durable. Whatever you have to say. Let them know that I'm going to be using better stuff. So kind of like side eye, this is why my prices kind of went up. So we always want to make sure we're using the best quality products and that's how we can also level up our business and become more professional. Number three would be business management. So again, you've been doing this for a while. This is your only source of income or you're highly considering making it your only source of income. Why not make it legit and register your business with your state? So this is something that you can easily do online. There's a lot of different ways that you can register. You can register to be LLC. You can be a sole proprietorship. You can do an S Corp. There are many different ways. I can't tell you how to register your business. You would have to speak to a business advisor and they can possibly tell you 
what would be the best direction for you to take your business to? If not, go online. I mean, I did it myself. It was very simple to go online. Read about the different ways. And I know through New York State, they kind of guide you through it. If you go to SBA.com, they will guide you through the process on what would work. They ask you a lot of different questions. I don't know if every state is the same. But again, this is something that you have to do the research into and look into starting to make your business official. There's no better way to seem professional than to say, you know what, I'm not just gonna do this as a hobby. I'm not just gonna do this for fun. I'm gonna register my business. I'm gonna be serious. This is my only source of income and make it legit. When I knew this was time for me, I've been doing nails for many, many years. I had never registered my business. It wasn't until earlier this year, and I knew kind of last year where I wanted to take it, but I said, you know what, I'm gonna make it legit and register my business because now I have multiple sources of income. I have to, kind of make it all work underneath one umbrella because I have nail teach and I have kitchen nails. So I have other things going on and I just wanted to make it like official. Because let me tell you, and I speak to you guys so much about taxes. When you're doing your taxes and you're unemployed, it's very complicated and hard to keep you have to be on top of your expenses and your books and your record keeping and all that stuff. So to just register your business, you're doing your quarterly taxes, you're filing everything. It feels better for me to just know that I'm doing everything legit. So that's something that you want to consider as you level up your business. Leave me a comment below if you want me to do a video on my process and how I registered my business, what steps I took, what changes. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, it ain't a pretty picture a lot of the time. So if you wanted me to do a video on that and walk you through the process or tell you the story about what I would do, leave me a comment below for that. Number four, your money management. So you're, this is your only source of income and you have money coming in, especially if you're a nail tech that mainly takes cash, you have credit card stuff coming in. You want to make sure that you are managing your money. You have to keep good books. And the best way to do this, I promise you, is through a booking system. I'm not gonna sit and knock anybody that takes appointments in their DMs and they do everything manually or maybe they have a spreadsheet or Excel or something. Whatever works for you, but you have to keep good books. One, this will help you when you do your taxes. And one, this is just good for you to know. You don't want to just collect, 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 spend, spend, spend. And you don't really understand our, our processing where your money is going, where it's being spent. You guys know I came up with the beauty workbook and planner. And I showed you that in the video of how I run my business. I'll leave the link above. And I've been using that before that. I'm not going to lie to you. I wasn't doing much. I mean, I took notes and everything, but but I wasn't really doing much. Now I'm taking that time every single week and closing out my books and every month closing out my books, every quarter closing out my books, doing taxes and keeping track of what's going on. Because a lot of times, especially if you are shopping online and you're nail crazy or you're on Amazon and you're just clicking away and spend, 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 spend. Like I said, you don't realize like, okay, well, I might have made $800, but I spent $300 on this and then I just did this and then I paid my bills and then this and then that. And it, you'll lose track of it very quickly. So sometimes, even if everything is fine financially with you, you just want to make sure like, okay, this is where my money went and this is where it's going. And like, again, if you are doing your taxes, it's going to be so much easier to break that down while you are having everything nice and organized. So on top of that, we can also create like a business account. There are many uh, branches and every branch has a business account that you can start doing. Building your business credit, that is a big thing. That's something that I'm working on. As somebody that is a sole owner, they're going to look at me. So I have to work on my own credit before I can build my business's credit. But to have good business credit is a bonus. And no, you don't have to actually have an official business account because if you do have a business account you're right you have to be a registered business they're going to want your EIN number they're going to want to know everything if you're actually getting a business account with the bank but what you can do and what I started doing a couple years ago was I just opened a regular account and I just use it for all my nail stuff so all my bills for nails come out that come from there everything that I'm working gets processed through that account it's not an actual business account but it's just account that I use for my business. Either way, it's some type of organization that separates me from work when it comes to the money. Also using a booking system. Booking systems are super awesome and beneficial. Again, I'm gonna just stress this because one, it's an easy way for you to just see in plain sight where 
what's going on with my appointments. It's keeping track of your, your time. It's keeping ta- track of your most popular appointments. So if I know maybe I, I had this pedicure, but when I'm actually looking at it, it's the least booked that can help you out to know maybe I should just discontinue this pedicure. It's keeping track of your money. It's telling me you have this coming from PayPal. This is from here. This is from there. This is from there. So it's a nice way to um, be organized and it does all the work for you. You can easily get a booking system um, membership. I mean, style seat was like 35. Acuity is like 25 or 15 or something. There's book seat. There's so many out there and they're actually very affordable. It's definitely worth it to invest in getting yourself a booking system. I get so many compliments from my customers about my booking site. And a lot of times they, they're complimenting me on like the professionalism of it. They say, oh, it's so easy. I like that you have a site. I like that it's very descriptive. The, the services are, are listed. They can just book and see everything in plain sight. It's not a lot of, oh, I got to contact this person, ask her how much it's going to be. She's DMing me. She's this, she's that. I recently switched from Style Seat to Acuity because I felt a lot of my customers were saying it was a little confusing on Style Seat. I didn't care for some of the things on the back end with Style Seat and then I knew I wanted to offer more and another booking system can do that for me and actually for cheaper. So I switched systems, my customers love the new system, they think it's so much easier, it's so much easier for me if I do classes, I can throw that in on there as well, I can do this, I can block myself, I can have multiple, when I get my employee I can add that. It's a lot easier for me so this is why I chose to switch but again it's professional it's just something that you want to start to take seriously again you're going to take this seriously and this is going to be your only source of income this is going to be your business your official legit business you want to come off as professional to your clients so again I like to use my business workbook and planner I will leave a link above for that, if you can check that, if you want to check that out on my Etsy shop. If not, you don't have to do, you don't want to pay for a booking system, you don't want to pay for anything else, you, you can use good old trusty Excel. Make a spreadsheet, keep track of your books. That's the only point that I'm trying to make really here. You don't need anything fancy, you just want something that is going to be organized. Uh, electronic actually will obviously work a little bit better than paper just because you can keep it longevity within the long term. You should at least keep your books for a couple of years before you decide to delete stuff or toss stuff. You never know when Uncle Sam is going to come knocking and there's three people we don't mess with, the I, the R, and the S in this world. So keep your books for a couple of years because you never know. And, but whatever system you're going to be using, just make sure it's kind of accurate, it's up to date, and it's kind of nice and organized. So other ways that we can build our business and don't just look at your clients as like walking dollar signs. They are our friends. A lot of us, we connect with our customers, especially if you've been doing people for many years. I apologize about the lighting if it's nasty and I apologize about this AC that I have on, but it's like hot as hell in this room. So I was like, hopefully I can mute the background sound, but if I can, I apologize about the lighting and the background sound. But we want to make sure that we are connecting with our customers. Let's just say there is a day where Instagram, Facebook, social media or something, something, social media goes out of play or something happens and you, your phone got hacked or you got to change your number. You never really know. One thing that I would suggest for you to do is get yourself an email list. An email list is an excellent way to keep in contact with your followers, your subscribers, your customers. However, we can send out bulk messages to people instead of texting everybody one by one or being in someone's DMs or calling them. It's just nice. It's very professional. It's very convenient. And it's actually free. You can find many systems that offer free services for email lists up to like 2,000 contacts, which most of us probably don't have like 2,000 people that we want to contact like that. MailChimp is a company that I personally use. I love them. I have a free subscription with them. Right now, I don't really see a need to do the membership and what I do, it's $7, it's $7 a month if I want to update my membership and get certain other little added features, which I might end up needing later on in the future. But for right now, the free version is more than enough. So expansion is another way that we can kind of grow our clientele and build our business. So if you are somebody that's working and you see that you need a little help, I've mentioned to you guys previously that I'm looking for a little help this summer. I'm bringing somebody on to help me out with pedicure. It's just because when I'll be able to take more people to, it'll relieve a little bit that's going on with me and it'll give me an opportunity to kind of work with her one-on-one and, and train her, give her that 
experience that she's looking for. So expand yourself. Hire somebody to help you out. If you don't want to hire somebody to help you out that's doing nails and you have the space or you're a shop owner, get somebody in to do lashes. Get somebody in to do waxing. Get somebody in to do just manicure pedicures. That's up to you. If you choose to bring somebody in to help you, that is going to be super beneficial for your business. Again, if they are working underneath you, meaning you're going to be paying them some type of commission or something, it's going to help you out. Because basically, you're going to be getting a small cut from them working. You're not really doing the work, them doing the work, but you're going to have to share some of your profits. Or like I said, if you have enough space and you want to bring somebody in that's not in your field, that's going to be doing something else that can still benefit your clients. You might want to consider renting. Renting is great because it's automatic money. Every month, every week, whatever you decide, they're going to have to be paying you money. Now, why I choose to take on this new person that's going to be doing pedicures with me, she will be working commission. How I was raised in the nail salon is my old boss used to have acrylic people be commissioned, manicure, pedicure people work daily. They get paid per day. I liked that concept because what I noticed is when you hire somebody that's renting, and this is just my opinion and my advice, when you hire somebody that's renting, they're going to come in, they're going to have their own little space, they're going to have their own clientele, they're not going to want to feel like a part of the team. They're just going to feel like an independent contractor, which in a sense, they kind of are. They're not obligated to really cater your customers. They're not really obligated to you or, or anything. So they're going to come in. Do what they do and then bounce. It might not benefit you. Yes, you might get that monthly or weekly income from them. And if you're fine with just that, that's fine. But if you want to build a place, especially if you have a small space, and like I said, you're bringing in somebody else doing another service, you want to make sure that people come into your space and they feel like everyone's connected. Everyone maybe has on like the same uniform, same shirt. They're all like flowing together. It's all friendly. It's not like She's over here doing this. She's over there doing that. She's in the back doing this. No one's really talking. No one's really communicating. I've worked with many shops, women at Caddy. This person's talking about this person. She's saying she's whack. Her hair sucks. Like, we don't want that. So sometimes in your rent, you get that disconnection in the shop between all the employees. Whereas when you have commission, everybody is there for the boss. They're there for the business. They're working for the business. So yes, they have to listen to you. I want you guys here at this time. You're leaving at this time. These are your responsibilities. This is that. You tell them what to do. So it makes it a little bit more united as a business. But again, that's my opinion. But bringing on other people to help you expand is definitely another good way that we can build our business. So some other possibilities in the industry. So let's say you're fine with how you're doing nails. You're not really looking to expand your services, up your prices, build your clients up, whatever. You just want to look for other possibilities. There are many other possibilities in this industry. So I'm going to talk about a couple that you can do as a nail technician to help you kind of grow your business in a sense. So we're not going to be talking like not nail wise, but other ways that we can bring in income. So we can look into some passive income. So what is passive income? Passive income is when you would create a product or something that you can just kind of create one time, put it out there and make money on it. So it's not really something that you're going to have to look into. So let's say I came out with a, a line of, of, of t-shirts and I put it on my website. This is a story actually, it's not like let's say. So I put it on my website and it's just there. The t-shirts are there, the clothing, whatever you're going to do, hats, pens, whatever. It's just there. It's being sold. People will buy it. I will collect passive income on it as people make sales. I don't have to be into it. I don't have to peep into the website. I don't have to do anything. Digital downloads, like my beauty business workbook and planner, that's passive income. Because when a sale comes in, it just comes in. I took the time and the research to create the product. I put it out there and now I'm done with it. I don't need to babysit it. I don't need to come back to it. I don't need to revamp it. I don't need to sell it, ship anything to anybody. I don't have to do anything. Digital downloads are also a very good passive income if you're looking for something, but if not, products are good passive income as well. Think about what your audience wants. Think about what your audience needs. And yes, if you are just a nail technician, you can create something for your clients that can be passive income. If you were to come out with some products or your scrub, my products are also passive income. I create my balm, my scrub, my cuticle oil pen, all that stuff. It sits in my nail room in the corner when somebody wants it, they want it. It's not 
as passive as a digital product because I do have to restock and make, but it's something that I can also collect and come off on the side that brings in a little bit of something. No, it's not bringing in poo poo bucks, but it's just something that I have on the side that's going to make it. I saw a need for it because I noticed a lot of my customers, a lot of people, a lot of women in general, they don't really think the time, take the time to moisturize themselves. They don't really take the time to do something. So again, my whole product line was like kind of making something that women can carry in their purses, very small. I didn't want to make anything that they just sit on their dresser. Everybody has a bunch of stuff they just sit on their dresser and they don't touch. So I wanted to create something that they can carry in their purse, leave in their car, and get treat their nails and their skin as well. So think about what your audience wants. What do they what do they want? What do they need? Listen to what they're telling you when they say, Oh, my skin is always so dry or I wish I had like nails and you know, sometimes I want to do my nails, but you're not around or it's hard for me to come to you. If people are telling you, come up with some press ones, make a whole bunch of press ones and then just push them out. You can easily do that. That's another good passive income idea. So think about that and what you can possibly do. So this also goes into play with what I discussed before finding your niche in the industry. I will leave a link to a video where you can go check that out and, and how to find your niche in the industry. And it also comes with a free download to, that you can answer some questions to help narrow down what your possible niche would be. Because finding your niche in this industry is crucial to eventually growing and seeing where you can go. You can't just grow all branches in different directions. Eventually, you're going to have to pick a path and figure out where you want to go with your business. Even if it's just nails, you're going to decide, I'm just going to do nails. So go check out that video if you are interested in finding your niche and in possibly developing some passive income and creating a product. Another great idea would be classes. If you have somebody that's been doing nails for a long time and you have some knowledge that you want to share, come up with some classes. You can easily do one-on-one -on -one classes. You can do group classes. You can do virtual classes. You can do all different types of classes that you can offer to people, other nail techs, other students, other people that would be interested in learning from you. That is a great way to kind of build your business. Maybe that's something that you never even really thought about. A lot of times, I'm gonna tell you, I always wanted to teach, but it wasn't until I actually started teaching that made me realize I actually know a lot about this industry. I've been in this business for so long. So it wasn't until sometimes I start talking that I realize the information that I'm actually giving. So sometimes don't hold yourself back and think, oh, well, I don't really know anything. I just do this. You'd be surprised at how much you know. So if you want to dive into classes, that is another good way to build your business. Last but not least, affiliate marketing. So we might have heard this term on YouTube somewhere. What is affiliate marketing? So affiliate marketing is something where you're going to make a small commission selling a product or a service or something by having people purchase using your unique code or link. So you guys know I have an affiliate marketing relationship with Amazon. I love Amazon yeah. and <laughs> I work with them on my nail tech shop is all kind of my Amazon affiliate marketing. I have my Amazon storefront. That's the other thing that I kind of introduced recently. So affiliate marketing is great. Again, it's something that's passive income. It's something that you're going to put out there. You're going to take a second to create how do I want to do my affiliate marketing? How, who do I want to work with? So on and so, on and so forth. It's something that you kind of just put out there and people will purchase or not. They're not obligated to do anything. You guys so show some support. I definitely appreciate that. But it's not something that you have to do. So if you are interested in affiliate marketing, how can you start that? So with affiliate marketing, you want to back a brand that you truly love. You know, I love Amazon. I love Amazon. So that was a no brainer for me to work with Amazon. I'm also an affiliate with um, McCart. So McCart has products. Sometimes we get stuff released to us. I don't really speak too much about my McCart um, affiliation just because I haven't really seen anything. Again, I, I, I don't want to sit here and pitch you guys, buy this, buy that, use my code, do this, do that. I'm not going to lie. I haven't really seen much that I wanted to push out to you guys when it comes to that, that my code for that. Um, my code is always in the description box below. If you are shopping on McCart just in general and you want to save 15%, you can use my code. But I haven't really seen anything. So you want to sign up with different 
people. Affiliate marketing is sky's the limit. You can sign up with everybody that you choose to and have 15,000 codes for all these different brands. But again, you want to choose a brand that you can fully say to your audience, like, I like this product. Go buy this product. I'm going to save you some money on this product. This product is awesome. So you want to just be true to yourself. You don't want to come off as a salesperson when it comes to affiliate marketing. So leave me a comment below if you are you want to dabble into affiliate marketing if you have any other questions about that or you want me to just discuss how i got into affiliate marketing with the brands that i currently work with leave me a comment below and we can do a video on that in the future all right guys that was a lot of talking so i hope i was able to help you expand your mindset on how you can grow your business level up your business there's no and to how big you can make your own business, how successful you can be. Leave me a like if you appreciate this video. I left a lot of little links without the video. So if you guys want me to do a video in the future about any of these topics that I spoke about, please leave me a comment below and I will go ahead and do that for you. Please subscribe. And yes, I'm talking to you. I, I'm in my analytics. I see that some of you are watching and not subscribed. So please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button, don't forget to tap the notification bell, and thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.